Okay, first of all, how are you doing today? Awesome. Welcome to the Ontario Festival of Arts. And I'm glad you came out. Good to see you. And just a little bit about you. Um, I'll start with your name, full name. Um, Susan is my full name, Cheatham. And um, I usually go by Sue. Been an artist all my life. Was an art teacher, actually, uh, junior high, high school, college, um, for about 30 years, and uh, retired about seven years ago, and um, built a studio, and my husband, who is also an artist, Michael Chia, uh, he and I shared the studio. Oh, perfect. Well, tell me, tell me more about your body of work. Well, um, I have been a printmaker all my life since my first experience was uh, high school art class. And um, the whole idea of taking a, a drawing or a concept and, and putting it on a block of wood and then carving out either the positive or the negative and then um, pulling a print, you know, the whole, that whole process. That, that's my passion. Okay. Uh, what medium do you work in? Um, printmaking. Printmaking. Mm -hmm. make that's sure. a, that's, that's clear. That's the medium. Okay. What inspires your creativity? Well, probably originally I would have to say, um, I had a cousin, his name was Herman, and he made prints and did the same kind of printmaking well into his 90s. Mm. And when he passed away, I adopted um, some of his blocks, and I also adopted, I think, his perseverance to continue printmaking in, in this particular form. Ooh. There are a lot of different kinds of printmaking, but something about holding onto a block of wood, carving in with the grain of the wood, and um, and then I also do linoleum, where you have the same process, but on the substrate mm -hmm. is a block of linoleum. Oh, that sounds... Yeah. I gotta get by your booth and check it out. <laughs> uh, what... What's your motivation to create? Um, it's almost a, a drive. You know, um, I think because I've always made art and, and I was a teacher of art. I made art every single day. And so it was just a natural transition to continue making art, you know, when I retired from the classroom, the regular classroom. So, yeah. Wow. I feel very, very blessed to be able to wake up every day and walk into an open space, be able to create, and, um, and not have to clean it up because maybe my husband needs help making dinner or laundry needs to be moved over, you know, mm -hmm. all those other things that keep us from, from our passion. That's perfect. Uh, what is your strongest influence in your work? Um, you mean somebody that influenced uh, me? Or? Uh, it could be an object, it could be a person, it could be something you read. Um, well, my one of my all-time very favorite modern artists is Georgia O'Keeffe. And um, she was not a printmaker, she was a painter. But she painted almost until the day she died as well, and she was in her 90s. Wow. And I admired her because she, uh, she painted during a time when it was uh, a very man, very male-driven um, era. And she broke through that barrier somewhat. She was not well received, but I think she 
she was true to her own passion okay. and continued making art in her own way. Um, so she was a big influencer, I think, in my own my own life. So. Uh, how do you define success as an artist? Oh, well, um, I'm sure a lot of people would define success um, as an artist. Um, probably being able to make a living. You know, it's always tied to the dollar. And I think because I am blessed to be um, having, having a, a partner as an artist, um, being having the time now and being in good health, I um, you know I'm able to do this on a on a daily basis. So. Is your husband retired also? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That works out great. It's wonderful. Okay. Uh, how has your style changed throughout the years, if it, if at all? It has. Um, so. In the field or in using the media uh, medium of printmaking, there are many forms of printmaking. The, the, the ones that I have stuck with uh, are wood block and linoleum. So mostly relief, they're called relief printmaking. And I realized um, probably about the time I retired and able to break some of the rules in art because when you go to art school, I guess when you go to any school, and you're taught in a certain way, and you're expected to behave and, and create by the way you were taught, when you are no longer having to abide by those rules, you can kind of break some barriers. So I realized that it, the, the carving process is the part that I love. And it has to do with that tactile, touching the wood the whole time while I'm carving. When I pull the print, the print itself, the finished product, traditionally, is um, has no, there's nothing tactile about it. It's ink on a piece of paper. And so I realized I needed that tactile and anyway started doing uh, collage so I got into adding the aspect of collage things to my printmaking which is kind of sacrilegious in the okay. field of printmaking now I'm serious as a heart attack okay you do not venture or steer away from that traditional black ink on white paper and so I began to cut and tear my prints and I would glue them on a, on a separate substrate and then I would glue and, and add layers of things, paper and other materials on, the, on top of that. So parts of my original block print are still there, but the end result is a collage, okay. mixed media collage. So um, that's how my work has um, moved, moved on in a little different direction. You know what? That's perfect, though. You, you, you're doing your own thing, basically. I, I look at it as growth, mm -hmm. you know, kind of growing and, um, and having the time and the opportunity. You know, it, it, I'm very, very, very lucky. Perfect. Okay, now, question I have to ask every artist. How do you seek how do you seek out opportunities as an artist to show and sell your work? Oh. Well, when it became apparent that I had more art in my home than I had walls for, you have to 
you reach a point where you, you have to do something to make it work. And every year, my family and friends are very kind to take pieces off my hand. And occasionally, um, for the holidays or birthdays, you know, I will do that and continue to share. I do have um, a, a couple of um, friends and family who are very supportive and they will constantly buy pieces from me. So that's, that's a, a big plus. But the, I realized I needed that, I needed the contact with other artists. I mean, I was in a, an, an art classroom for 30 years, five days a week, with minds that, young minds that were exploding every day. And so I just needed a little bit of, of contact, not with the kids so much, but with um, the sharing of ideas. And so I fell into it. I started to investigate some groups in the Inland Empire. And um, we have some wonderful organizations. And one is the Pomona Valley Art Association that I am lucky to be a member of. And it's a co-op, an artist co-op. And um, we just happened to have moved recently as a group of artists who share in all the aspects of paying the rent and cleaning the carpet and blah, 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 manning the gallery, um, that we have a, now have a, a space in uh, Claremont. And I know this sounds like a commercial and it's not. No, but what's the address? The address is 317 First Street, uh, First Avenue, maybe. Uh, and it's in Claremont, okay. in the village. And for the first time, we had, you know, we used to be in the Montclair Plaza. And with COVID, it kind of shut us down. We didn't have that foot traffic. And, and so now we're in a new space. We, it's wonderful to be in there and have people off the street come in and, and look at all this wonderful variety of, of work on the walls, on shelves. We have three-dimensional art. And, um, and it's just really cool to be in that space and, and share, have this, uh, you know, have these conversations with other artists, so it's great. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I just want to find out, basically, <laughs> what do you enjoy most about participating in Ontario, in, in participating in Ontario's Festival of Arts? I'm going to get that right sooner or later. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So, I only do two outdoor um, art festivals uh, anymore, two a year. This is one of them. And I, I love, first of all, the environment here. Um, it's not crazy big yet. I have a feeling through the years it will get a little bigger, but right now it's, it's nice and sweet in that um, it, we're well received by the community. Um, today happens to be a perfect weather day. I was a little fearful months ago that we were, it was going to be triple digit. And no, we actually have clouds and it's beautiful out. Um, we are um, part of the museum here, the Chafee community, of which my husband and I are members and um, very supportive. And um, this kind of gives them a little bit more um, interaction with the artists in the community, and I love that. Um, and it's a good, it's a really good venue. They, they are nice to us. Um, they take care of the canopy or the easy up. I don't have to schlep that. And uh, the tables and chairs, and, and believe it or not, that's really appreciated. Perfect. I'm, so, I know they, they will appreciate hearing that from you. Yeah, and they're they're really kind um, artists and, and folks who appreciate art as well. And um, and I just like the community of it. Okay. Now, I already know the answer to this, but what is your connection to Ontario and surrounding communities? Oh well. Um, 
I have connected quite a bit more over the years. Um, I don't live in the area, but um, I, I like it has a good vibe in Ontario and the whole this whole area. Um, good vibe in that uh, I like the old buildings. Um, the, the again the communal feel community feel and um, yeah and I'll keep coming back okay yeah. I appreciate that I hope I look forward to seeing you next year oh you will okay and once again your name Sue Gina thank you so much for coming out today thank you it's a pleasure speaking to you you too Mike. and thanks for taking the time to speak to me anytime thank you thank you Thank mm -hmm. you.